over the last 20 years, galaxy research has made it clear that star formation in galaxies peaked about 3.5 billion years after the Big Bang. In the intervening 10 billion years since then, the number of stars forming per year has been decreasing. This peak is often referred to as the cosmic noon. Since this time, they know that galaxies continue to become larger and more massive, but the reason for this decrease remains a mystery. Let's examine this from an alternative perspective and see if this can shed some light on many of the topics we have recently been covering. To delve into this problem, astronomers need to understand what is going on in a specific region where the stars are forming. What the nature of the stellar nurseries is, how dense the gas is, whether it is rich in metals and what radiation these environments are exposed to. And in order to answer these questions, they need to investigate the spectra of the galaxies in question. From this, they identify that the galaxies in the cosmic noon have more ionized nitrogen and oxygen compared to hydrogen than their lower redshift counterparts. In a recent study examining the electron density in galaxies with a redshift of between 1.5 and 1.7, versus ones which are considered to be much closer, in other words, in our neighbourhood, they then calculated the electron density in each sample. In the first diagram, we can see that the electron density plotted as a function of stellar mass of galaxies. The red dots represent the higher redshift galaxies, while the blue contours represent the local galaxies. In the next diagram, we see star formation rate plotted against electron density, and lastly, we see the specific star formation rate plotted against electron density, and this really means star formation rate divided by mass. Now, this data clearly shows that there is an increase in electron density as redshift increases. They therefore conclude that this increase in electron density is directly linked to higher star formation rate, that this drives the increase of ionized oxygen and nitrogen with respect to hydrogen. This, they speculate, could be caused by the presence of more massive young stars, which in turn means more energy is being released into the environment via shocks and stellar winds, which would lead to an increase in electron density. So let's take a small step back here. As we have been discussing in the ARPS evidence series, redshift should not be used to judge distance. Instead, what he clearly shows is that there is a quantization of the redshift for not only quasars, but galaxies as well. This means there are discrete values that it tends to appear at, and not in between. We also saw from the distribution of quasars and galaxies that active galaxies will tend to eject material, which includes quasars along specific lines. These gradually evolve into larger galaxies, which in turn can produce more quasars. When we examine the redshift of the ejected quasars and galaxies, there is a clear pattern that quasars that sit closer to the ejected galaxies have higher redshift, and this redshift decreases as you move further away. But as we have already discussed, this seems to occur in discrete steps. Now, I think the first point to realize is that if this material is being ejected and it is evolving over time, then we would expect it to have its highest energy level closest to that injection process. And therefore, it should also have the highest electron density at those points. Now, explaining the quantization is a little bit more difficult. But the first point to realize is that if these galaxies do indeed have higher electron density, then it must equally be affected by plasma redshift. And we have discussed this a number of times. Higher electron density should therefore become more shifted to the red, meaning that these objects cannot be at the remote distances they keep talking about. Now explaining the quantization of this redshift using plasma redshift is a little bit harder to do, and it is something that we will be exploring in a lot more detail very shortly. Now ARP thought that the mass of the electrons was changing as the objects were being ejected and evolving over time, and that this increased in quantized steps, causing what we see as the quantization of the redshift today. Now, Wolf Thornhill's view is that these newly ejected quasars, or young galaxies, are more electron deficient compared to the older object. 
and this would cause the electrons from the surrounding environment to stream towards these electron deficient objects and this then produces increased polarization of the matter which causes quantized increases in the mass of the electrons and the protons. At the same time this also means that the Birkeland currents in the galaxies are more active and hence produce more stars. Now this is a topic we'll be coming back to very shortly. The most important aspect from this paper is that there is a correlation between high redshift and high electron density. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.